Hey, my name's C.B. Sobolski, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics. There are a lot of misconceptions about portfolio reviews or certain things you should and shouldn't do. First and foremost, don't break the panel borders. This is something I cannot emphasize enough. Panel borders are supposed to be broken for special moments, probably about once every issue. If that, and if you break a panel border, break the panel border down. The action is supposed to move from left to right, top to bottom. Don't carry the reader's eye back up to the previous panel. If you're doing it for artistic reasons or stylistic reasons along the lines of people like Adam Kubert or Olivier Coipel, let them be the ones to do it. They've been doing it for years. After 20 years of experience, you can start breaking panel borders for stylistic reasons too. But please, it's my biggest pet peeve. Just keep the action in the panel borders. Gutters, okay. Do not blacken your gutters. Gutters or panel borders between the panels are there for a reason. They subconsciously give the reader a, a beat between panels to pause in the action. If you put the panels together, if you leave out the gutters, if you blacken the gutters, it completely ruins the reading experience. Everything kind of melds together, not just from panel to panel, but as a page, and the eye won't really know where to go or won't process the information as well. So please leave your panel gutters white. This course really is the next level. It is extremely comprehensive in a way that we as Marvel have been looking for a partner to do something with from storytelling to the basics of the arts and the layouts. Taking everything through to how to create a modern comic book and it really has become a fascinating process, whether you work print or whether you work digitally. Don't crop your hands and your feet. There people who don't like drawing certain things. I know artists who are friends of mine who've been in this business for 25, 30, some even 40 years. They don't like drawing hands. They don't like drawing cars. They don't like drawing horses. The list goes on. But you have to learn to draw what you don't like. Don't crop out what you don't want to draw because it will be noticed to people by me, whose job it is to know stuff like that, but it will be noticed by the reader. It is very obvious. And if you don't like to draw it, practice drawing it. Keep drawing it get better at it. Put it in the panels to make sure that you get better at it or find different ways to hide it in the panels rather than just crop it out. Speaking of horses and hands and cars, use reference. It's extremely important. And don't just use other comic books as reference. Go out and experience life. Take life drawing classes. Go out, take your sketchbook. Go out into the street, sit on a bench, draw people, draw cars, draw trucks, draw trains, draw buildings. Oh, People who can't draw buildings, who just do boxes with, you know, fake windows in them, no good. Go out and know, look at what a building really looks like. Especially when you're drawing Marvel comics, you're going to draw New York City. There's water towers, there's window panes, there's ledges, there's gargoyles. There's all kinds of things that go into the architecture of buildings to make it feel like New York. And New York is a character Marvel book, so that's very important. So do not hesitate to use reference. But if you are using reference and you're going to Google image search, do not take the first image on the first page of the search. Look for something that fits in and that you can use and don't trace it. Please use it as a reference. That's why it's called reference. It's there for you to refer to, not to copy. Uh, so that's extremely important. Stick to the grid. Too many people, thanks to the comics of the 90s, and nothing wrong with that. I love the 90s comics. Do crazy page layouts. As a beginning artist, as someone who's submitting your portfolio review to Marvel, who's someone who hasn't worked for us yet, Stick to the grid. Learn the rules of how to tell a story before you break those rules. That is extremely important. Consistency. Consistency is very important, especially in facial features and hands and hair. The two best ways to tell a story visually are through the use of hands and with body language. And there has to be a consistency to the features in each character, the shape of the eyes, the distance between the eyes, the size of the hands, the size of the fingers, the length of the arms. Focus on that consistency. One of the biggest mistakes I see all the time is different lengths of body parts, different spatial features that don't align, and you can't tell the, who the characters are, much less understand what the story is as you move through the comic. So, very important to pay attention to. And one other rule that I always tell people is, and it, it's more of something to keep in mind than it is a rule. There is a fine line between inspiration and imitation. That is extremely important to keep in mind because every artist, every comic book artist has artists that you love, other comics that you look at, someone you want to grow up to draw like. There's no problem with that. We all start out that way, but you have to grow beyond that. You have to develop a style on your own. One of the first questions I ask artists when I'm looking at portfolios is, so who are some of your influences? And they'll list a couple. And then I'll be like, oh, but you also like Dave Stevens. You like Olivier Coipel. You like Terry Dotson. 
How did you know that? But it's very obvious from your line work. And that's something that it's naturally, it happens. But to become a talented artist, to, to really get, become a professional who's going to have a style of their own, you have to learn to break the border between the art you love and who you want it to draw like and who you are as an artist. I can't put a number on the number of portfolios I've critiqued over the years. 20 years ago as an associate editor and we started just, we would get packages every day, people mailing in their portfolios. And then when I moved into talent management, I would go on the road and start doing conventions. So I've done hundreds, if not thousands of conventions and reviewed, I don't know how many thousands of portfolios, be it print portfolios, online portfolios, you know, in-person portfolios. It's mind blowing the amount of styles we get from different people around the world. It's mind blowing to see how many people understand the Marvel medium and where people's influences came from. Naturally, when I open any portfolio, the first thing I'm going to notice is the style. That's what jumps out at me. And that's always what will jump out to anyone who's reviewing a portfolio. So when I'm doing a portfolio review, I review it twice and review the style. And then at that point, I'm asking the artist to tell me about themselves, you know, the history of their background, their sorry, stylistic influences. And then once I have a sense of the style, which I can get after two or three pages, I'll go back and I'll look at the storytelling, which is obviously the most important or more important part. Anyone can have a style and styles can change. Styles can improve. Styles can get worse. We've seen it with even professional artists. Storytelling is something that is almost inherent in people. Yes, you can learn it and you can grow at it, but it comes naturally to so many different people. And there are other artists I've known. Literally, I've been reviewing their portfolios for 25 years and they haven't changed. They haven't grasped what makes a good storytelling. It's that combination of foreground and background, the way to use body language to move a character from panel to panel, the way to lay out a page in the most efficient way to make sure that the character gets from point A to point B where they need to block the shots and, and make sure that, you know, there's a consistency between all the imagery. That's where comic books come in most handy as a reference. When you're designing and drawing and coming up with ideas, you know, there's a reference outside the world. And I know I said earlier, don't look at comic books for reference. Look at comic books for storytelling. That's what comic books are all about. That's the magic of comics, is that with a pencil and ink, someone has gone in there and told a story with their own hand and their own mind from scratch and is moving those characters in a way that is so natural that your eye is picking up on it, your brain is reading it, and you're enjoying it. Storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. <laughs>